If that's you and that's what you really believe about Japan, I invite you to take it up with the Japanese themselves, preferably in Japanese language if you can. Let's see how that works out for you. What is good everyone? Welcome to the channel. My name is Paul and I make videos about Japanese society, life and culture from the viewpoint of a long-term foreign resident. I've been in Japan for about 18 years now and I've got a news flash for everyone. Are you ready? Japanese people don't think Japan is perfect. Seriously. The reason I bring this up is because if you make any kind of disparaging comment or negative observation about Japanese society in a YouTube video or in a comment on a YouTube video, there's going to be a group of netizens that descend upon you and defend Japan with phrases like, it's their society and that's how they like it, or as a foreigner you have no reason to comment. And so the topic of today's video is to share with you three common complaints about Japan that the Japanese make, okay? Before we get started on this particular topic, I just want to say that if that type of Japan Defender Netizen descends upon this video, I would ask you to please hit the like button if you got something out of this video or you enjoyed it because there's a chance it could be downvoted a bunch of times and so help me balance that out. I don't usually ask for likes on my videos because uh, frankly I usually forget but this time do me a favor and hit that like button if you can. Now again I want to reiterate these are not things that I'm complaining about about Japan. I'm presenting three things that the Japanese themselves complain about. And the first one is work-life balance. There was a recent video by Paolo from Tokyo, who's a much larger YouTuber than I, and there were some people who were making negative comments on the video he made recently about basically how to not to get on bad terms with your Japanese co-workers. And the Japan apologist descended upon these comments and it was really interesting to see. Now, the truth is, the Japanese themselves absolutely complain about the work-life balance, not being able to take their allotted vacations, working tons of overtime without being paid. It might have worked back in the Showa era when everyone was getting rich, but we're not in that era anymore. And here's the thing, what's often pointed out by these people who defend Japan is, well, it's Japanese culture. It's like samurai, bushi, bushido culture. And well, I guess that's kind of true that in the Showa era, the business culture borrowed this kind of bushido, give your loyalty to your company and live for your company rather than for your personal life. The thing is, that was always a bushido code as in for warriors. Ordinary people did not live by that code. The craftsmen, the merchants, the farmers, they weren't warriors. They were not living by Bushido. Yes, Japan has always been a country of cooperation and collaboration. That's still very, very important, but it's not Bushido. That's a different matter. And so the whole construct of this samurai code in business, the Saturday man living for their company, like feudal warriors lived for their lord, that is a modern construction. And what's my proof of all this? Well, I teach at a university and countless of my students have given final presentations, final essays, where they have talked about with evidence, data, examples, and facts, the problem with the work-life balance culture in Japan. So they are well aware of it and they have the evidence to back it up. So it's not the case where Japanese just like it and that's just the way it is because that's how the society works. Japanese want to change it as well. The second thing that Japanese themselves complain about is gender inequality. Yes, believe it or not, despite Japan being way down at the bottom in terms of rankings due to gender equality, well, the Japanese are aware of it and a lot of them want to change it. And 
I can't tell you how many female students I've had who said that they have no intention of stopping their career just because they've had children. And they think it's unfair that they might be passed over for promotion or even getting the job in the first place just because there might be a chance they get married and have a family and disappear, which is not fair. Now, it is true that there are more Japanese women who are wanting to be housewives and are perfectly willing to retire from whatever job they were working once they got married and had children. And that's totally fine. It's got to be a choice, though. The ones who want to work and have a career should be able to. And that's what at least the younger generations of women are wanting. And so it's not just some foreigner saying, oh, the Japanese have to have better gender equality and there's too much gender discrimination. The Japanese are fully well aware of it themselves. The final thing that the Japanese are, in this case, I would say aware of rather than actively complain about, but at least acknowledge it and are generally sympathetic towards is discrimination. You mentioned discrimination and quickly the netizens descend and say, well, in Japan, it's not racism because they discriminate against any foreigner. It doesn't matter if you're white or black or Hispanic, the race doesn't matter, so it's not racism. Okay, we can split hairs over whether it's racism or xenophobia, but it's still discrimination. And it's still not right in more cases than not. And the thing, well, the kind of the dirty secret is that Japan is a very discriminatory society against themselves. There's a lot of discrimination amongst Japanese against each other. And a lot of Japanese acknowledge this as a problem, not just discrimination towards foreigners, but discrimination towards anyone. And it's a part of the culture that is recognized as being kind of, yeah, it's not the best part of Japan or the best side of Japan. When it comes to foreigners, however, again, the apologists will come on and say, well, Japan is an island nation and they just aren't used to foreigners. And, you know, it's not discrimination it's so much as it's just ignorance of the outside world. I'm gonna tell you that's some pretty low-key racism right there. Really? It's 2023, not 1943. The Japanese have the internet. They all watch YouTube. They consume foreign media on a mass scale. They know what's happening in the international news. So to suggest that Japan is just this country ignorant of the outside is patently ridiculous. And I'm gonna go back to the racism thing because do you really think a country that is not cut off from the outside world isn't going to be at least somewhat consumed by the knowledge of stereotypes and beliefs about certain races and peoples? Do we really think that the Japan of the earlier part of the century, uh, 20th century just kind of gave up this idea that they were the superior Asians in Asia? Yeah, I mean, they still refer to people of Asia as Asia K, like Asian people, but they don't include themselves in that. It's the other Asians, right? So the idea that they're just ignorant or just they don't have those stereotypes, yeah, uh, that's definitely not the case. Now, is it rampant in Japan? No. I mean, it's definitely not in your face either. That's the thing about Japanese discrimination is it's usually kind of a hidden thing. It's not going to be someone shouting at you on the street or like announcing that they hate people of such such kind or and it will very very rarely be anything violent but it absolutely does exist and it's not because of ignorance or just xenophobia. So once again I just want to reiterate that this is not me complaining about these particular issues. I just brought them up because they are commonly comment upon or remarked upon issues that the Japanese themselves understand are a problem and are an issue. And here's the thing. I think the people who make these comments, who do the apologism for Japan, are often projecting their own viewpoint about how society should be on Japan and seeing it through rose-colored glasses. A colleague of mine put it this way. He said that they view Japan as some kind of last bastion of conservative society and that the gender roles and all of the traditional roles are how they want it to be and they don't want to change. 
Well, if that's you and that's what you really believe about Japan, I invite you to take it up with the Japanese themselves, preferably in Japanese language if you can. Let's see how that works out for you. Thanks for watching this particular video and it's good to be back. I'm happy to be making the videos again. Thanks for watching this particular one and I'll catch you next week. Peace.